Hello it's me Hiaska for Marijuana Garden. Ancient alien Anunnaki, ancient city discovery in Africa and human origin according to the studies of Zacharia Sitchin, there is a 12th planet in our solar this planet is called Nibiru and is situated somewhere beyond Pluto. This planet, unlike the other planets in our solar system, has an elliptical orbit and moves clockwise rather than counterclockwise. It was a collision of Nibiru with another planet in our solar system, Maldek, which created Earth. Nibiru's orbit passes through our solar system only once every 3,600 years, which is equal to one Nibiru year. This controversial theory is based on Sitchin's interpretation of ancient Sumerian texts, with its origin in the Bible, in the book of Genesis. This planet is inhabited by the Anunnaki, the Nephilim or giants in the Bible, those who from heaven to earth came. They landed on Earth, colonized it, mining the Earth for gold and other minerals, establishing a spaceport in what today is the Iraq-Iran area, and lived in a kind of idealistic society as a small colony according to some authors, the ancient Anunnaki were extremely advanced alien civilizations from an elusive planet in our solar system. These mysterious beings came to Earth over 400,000 years ago and kick-started the human civilization. Interestingly, if we look back at the countless discoveries that have been made in the last couple of decades, we will understand that history as we know it is completely different from the reality. But if the ancient Anunnaki did exist, wouldn't there be evidence of their legacy on Earth? If the ancient Anunnaki did visit Earth hundreds of thousands of years ago, would we not find evidence of their reign on Earth today? According to many authors, proof of the existence of the ancient Anunnaki can be found all around the globe. Well, an ancient city discovered in Africa could prove to be the missing link to the Anunnaki. In fact, countless archaeological and historical discoveries have been made that firmly contradict and challenge mainstream scholars and their views on human origins on history. In 1976, famous writer Zacharia Sitchin published his personal translations of the Sumerian texts in a series of books called The Earth Chronicles. According to Sitchin, the clay tablets describe an alien race known as the Anunnaki, who came to Earth to mine gold. Sitchin practically suggests that extraterrestrial visited Earth in the past because their home planet needed gold to survive. Located around 150 kilometers west of the port of Maputo, researcher and author Michael Tellinger has found the remains of a vast metropolis that measures, according to initial surveys, a staggering 1,500 square kilometers. This ancient metropolis is, according to many, part of an even larger complex that encompasses an even greater area of 10,000 square kilometers, but the most fascinating detail about it is its age. It is believed to be between 160,000 and 200,000 years old. When Hein first introduced me to the ancient stone ruins of southern Africa, he had no idea of the incredible discoveries we would achieve in the following years. The photographs, artifacts and evidence we accumulated points towards a lost civilization that has never before been and precedes all others, not for a hundred years or a few thousand years, but many thousands of years. Said Tellinger curiously, near these ancient metropolises the presence of ancient gold mines indicates the presence of an advanced civilization that was able to extract gold in 200,000 BC for a mysterious purpose. Tellinger explains that this is rather interesting since it shows how a time-worn lost civilization prospered in the region while being capable of extracting massive amounts of gold at several mines in the region, all of this at a time when mainstream scholars are telling us humans were not developed in order to undertake such sophisticated projects. But the question here is, who needed gold in 200,000 BC? How was it extracted, and is it possible that the relative vicinity to the sea was the reason why the giant metropolis was erected in the first place? Was gold used in trade and sculptures? Or is it possible, as the ancient astronaut theory proposes, that gold was used in a far more technological purpose than what mainstream scholars are willing to accept? I see myself a fairly open-minded chap, but I will admit that it took me well over a year for the penny to drop and for me to realize that we are actually dealing with the oldest structures ever built by humans on Earth. Said Tellinger interestingly, we find that some 250,000 years ago, according to Sitchin, the ancient Anunnaki merged their alien genes with that of Homo erectus and created a species known as Homo sapiens, obtaining as a result a genetically bicameral species. They genetically interfered in our indigenous DNA to create a slave race to work their mines, farms, and other enterprises in Sumeria, they created man, Homo sapiens, through genetic manipulation with themselves and ape man Homo erectus. 
Enlil and Enki, two governors of Earth sent from Nibiru to rule Earth, were responsible for all this power and control. They gave the ancient Sumerians their architectural, agricultural, astronomical, and cultural training in exchange for labor and gifts to the gods in the form of a lot of mining, food, and material goods. Therefore the Nibirians themselves no longer had to physically work on Earth. The Nibirians disguised themselves as fish humans, lion humans, bird humans, and other creatures to get the people to worship them as token gods, however, humans were a hybrid species and could not procreate. Since the demand for humans as workers became greater, the ancient Anunnaki once again manipulated ancient mankind so they could reproduce on their own. Based on the Cosmic Code. The sixth book of the Earth Chronicles by Zacharia Sitchin, this is the real historical timeline of our planet.